So if you're an artist and you're seeking to improve, the process is long and it's personal and surely there's going to be some roadblocks and some setbacks. So in this video I'm going to be going over three key habits and attributes you need to embrace when it comes to evolving as an artist. And in case you're new here, my name is Tyler Edlin and I've been an independent artist and instructor for just about 10 years now. And so this week my patron Sam wants to know when's it a good time to stop circling around these basic fundamentals and move on to something a little bit more difficult. This video is going to be brought to you today by my world building course for environment designers. I'll throw a few details of that at the very end. So for me, the first major step that you really need to acknowledge and really need to embrace as a self-trained artist is honesty. You need to really move on from the basic fundamentals when you're honest with yourself about the comprehension of these core principles. Things like perspective, things like lighting, form, shapes, line and pattern. And I don't mean mastery, just a pretty solid understanding of what they are and perhaps when to employ them in certain situations. Most artists when they train, they do feel really insecure. And it, trust me, I've been there, it feels like every other artist knows more than you do. So a lot of us end up falling into a trap of making it a race and try to catch up. So avoid the trap. At this stage in training, when it comes to the fundamentals, you, you can't be lying to yourself about knowing something and actually just slow down in these instances and learn. Only move on when you're completely honest with yourself and you feel your time is practically used elsewhere. Like if you literally sat down, drilled a bunch of fundamentals, and you don't feel that was a good use of your time and that there is more important things you can learn elsewhere. So while the first tip is a personality attribute, the second more is of a habit you can embrace. Knowing how much to routinely challenge yourself in order to avoid stagnation and maintain that forward moving momentum is absolutely critical. Now the learning curve with almost anything is fairly similar. You're going to get huge gains right off the gate and things are going to taper off and slowly and slowly kind of get better over time. But when this happens, a lot of us compare ourselves to these other artists, these successful artists. These are other successful artists that are happening today, right in the now. And really the trick is kind of simple here. What you want to do, and, and will inform you when to move out of this zone, when you're comparing yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. Compare yourself to what you were doing yesterday and the day before. If you're seeing that improvement and feeling good about it, you know, move on to something harder. And again, one of the consequences of looking too highly at others is that it, you can be really envious, but in turn, it can make you bitter if you're not careful. And so you don't want to stagnate in this zone of comfort and security, right? That happy, cozy place. Oh, you don't want to improve because you're doing great here and you're feeling great about that. Always try to just push beyond your edge and level of comfort. If you do go too far, you're gonna overstress and the productivity will drop. Now the last thing a lot of successful self-trained artists do by habit is set up those milestones and goals that having quarters, different courses, you know, different eight week programs, they all provide those, the certificates, those levels of completions. You need to set your own. The point of the matter is you're gonna need accountability. And of course, there is numerous ways to get accountability. You can make public statements, you can have friends and family, spouses hold you accountable. But I'd say go one step further. Because when you specifically write out and track your own progression and accomplishments, you'll know like at least once you hit them, you can move on and try something else with a little bit more confidence. And whatever kind of list and goals you set, they are gonna need these three core attributes to really be effective for you. These need to be specific. So for example, fundamentally speaking, if you're sitting down and say, I'm going to drill and learn anatomy, that's not specific enough. What part of anatomy are you gonna learn? Are you gonna learn the head? Are you gonna learn the pelvis? Are you gonna learn the, you know, the, the chest or torso? Are you going to learn how to render skin? Are you learning to render shape and form? Are you learning how to group and organize mass? 
Are you learning emphasizing gesture or movement with anatomy, right? There's so many different parts of it. You're only gonna get that growth that you need is if you very specifically name and plan what you're gonna learn. Same with landscapes. You're sitting down, you do a landscape, but what are you trying to learn from the, man the landscape? Are you practicing composition? Are you learning lighting and color? Are you learning how to simplify texture and details? Are you learning how to group shapes of light and shadow? Right, there's so many different parts of it. And if you just kind of go in blindly and without a plan, it's, it's not gonna help. The second thing you need is that these exercises need to be measurable. So again, you could just draw one, half a head, a full head, uh, you know, two landscapes, three landscapes. How are you ever gonna quantify that? You have to set certain limits three black and white landscapes, four colors, 50 head silhouettes and shapes, you know, 50 grouping of the masses of the shapes and forms utilizing light and shadow on the heads, right? You see what I mean? Like you can only get better if you're really getting specific with how you need to do this. The last major component is you do need a time limit. Are you gonna take all year to do these? Are you gonna take all month? Are you gonna do them in two days? Remember like 80 episodes ago, I had my guy Alex Neger on here do 2,000 hand studies in a month. That's how you do it. So if you just sit down and say, I'm going to do 50 heads within three weeks, I'm going to focus on only shape and form and contour. Now that's very specific. You're going to get a good exercise and a, and a great stunt of training out of that. And the purpose, of course, of all this is that it should create the right amount of stress for you really to kind of progress and grow. Learning is really optimized when, like I said, you're just beyond your edge and you're teetering with that certain amount of capacity you have for learning and outputting results. And there's a certain amount of fear in there that you may or may not do it. This discomfort and uncertainty, I can't stress enough, is the vital part to the growing experience. And if you can get comfortable not knowing something, then you can learn anything. You really can. And, it, and if you don't come to terms with that, then you've essentially stopped before you've even begun. So what it comes down to is you need to get out of the fundamentals if it does not provide you with the right amount of stress and discomfort. And I like to close this video out by saying none of these tips are going to help you if they're not personal to you. They, they can't be set by someone else. They can't be wished upon you. They can't be pressured upon you. You have to do what's meaningful to you at the end of the day when it comes to your training and what you're focusing on. Avoiding discomfort at any point is not an option. The growth won't happen. Learning won't be optimized. You have to be able to gauge your own capacity, fear, and control that. Separate your work from your studies. Learn from them, build upon them, and learn to challenge yourself. And you have to be okay with setting that time aside for just learning and nothing more. You do, I do, we all do. We owe it to ourselves as artists to continue to evolve and grow. And the only way that's gonna happen is if you journey out to the unknown and find these answers through trial and error and embrace that failure. I'll catch you guys next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a if you have any other ideas for future topics. Take care guys. And guys, keep an eye out. I'll soon be releasing six chapters of, of my environment design course. It's entirely self-contained, but it's a bit more of a sample of the four week intensive course coming out later this year. Patrons will get this, of course, but it will also be available in my various online shops.